What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some gaming and emulation performance on the all new M4 Mac Mini from Apple. And this is one that I've personally been excited about due to the performance we've been seeing coming out of this new M4 chip. And Apple has also given us a design upgrade, plus for the base model, we're getting 16 gigabytes of RAM, which might not sound like a lot if you're in the Windows PCs, we've been seeing that for a very long time. But when it comes to these Mac minis, we were kind of limited by the base model only coming with eight gigs of RAM, but now we've got an upgrade over there, plus the new more powerful M4 CPU. This is coming in with 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my mini PCs, so I knew I had to get my hands on this. And just taking a look at the overall design, it's not much smaller than most of the mini PCs out right now. We've been seeing this for a very long time from companies like Menace Forum. It's got the Ryzen AI9 HX370, which is an amazing performer on the CPU side and iGPU side, but the price is a bit steep. Base model is coming in at $1,100. Now we are getting a bit more over there, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte M.2 SSD that is user upgradable. And with the new Mac mini with that M4 chip, the base model is coming in at $599. So you can get your foot in the door for a lot cheaper, but keep in mind, internal storage is non-upgradable on the Mac mini. One thing I've been seeing a lot of people making fun about is the power button on the bottom here. And this really never bugged me because, you know, when I'm running my mini PCs, they usually just stay on. They go into hibernation mode. So it's never been a big deal. This thing isn't heavy. It's not going to take a lot to lift it up and press that button if you ever needed to. When it comes to I.O. on the base M4 Mac Mini, up front here, we've got two USB-C ports. These are actually 10 gig ports. Plus, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving around back, we've got our power input, gigabit Ethernet full-size HDMI, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and another USB-C port. The Mac Mini with the M4 Pro chip actually comes with Thunderbolt 5, but I opted to get the base model because I wanted to keep it as cheap as possible. And with this, again, we get that 10-core M4 CPU, 10-core Apple GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified RAM, and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. It's also got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 built in. Before we jump into it, I wanted to give you a look at a few things, and obviously when it comes to gaming on a Mac, there's a few ways we can go about this. From the App Store, obviously got a lot of games over here, we can uh, go ahead and install it. Nothing special we need to do here, these are just going to work natively in Mac. Epic Games, Steam, lots of Mac compatible stuff over there. But personally, I wanted to run some games that aren't natively supported by Mac, at least at the time I'm making this video. So I'm going to be using Crossover here. Now I did run into an issue with Fallout 4. I'm not sure if it's because I'm trying to use the updated Steam version, but the Game of the Year version through GOG does work. I just couldn't get this to launch, it would crash right on me. But everything else here has been working really well. We will be taking a look at some native Mac games, and then we're gonna move over to Crossover. Plus, I wanted to see how this thing handled PlayStation 3 emulation. If you're looking for GameCube, Wii, PSP, this thing's going to handle it across the board. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, those games will run at full speed. Even the M1 Mac does an amazing job. We're up to the M4 here with a lot more power, single core and multi-core, plus a significant jump in GPU performance. So for me, I mean, I already know that PSP and GameCube plus Wii is going to run just fine on the M4. PlayStation 3 is one of those that struggled on the M2 Mac Mini. And now that we've got this upgraded chipset, I think we're going to see some pretty decent performance. But before we get into gaming, I did run some benchmarks here, and I want to give you a look at those real quick. And keep in mind, this is the base M4 Mac Mini, 10-core CPU, Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 3,726, multi-core right there a little over 15,000. I mean, this is looking really great here, given the price point and the form factor. And just to give you an idea here, I recently tested Intel's brand new Core Ultra 9 285K. This is a desktop CPU, 24 cores. Single core on that, 3,297, multi, 21,707. Of course, that 285K is beating it out in multi-core, but you got to keep in mind that has 24 cores versus this M4's 10-core CPU. And finally, Cinebench R24, single core on that M4 coming in with a 176. And if you take a look down the list, it's beaten everything else out. Now, when we get over to multi-core, we only scored a 974. And again, 10 cores versus what's above it at 32 cores and 20 cores with the Apple M1 Ultra. But again, I also ran this on the Intel 285K. 
Single core on that is coming in at 149, and multi is definitely blowing this M4 out of the water with the 2478. But just seeing what we've got here, low power consumption, and the fact that that 285K cost more than this whole PC here is pretty impressive. Now it's time to check out some gaming, and we're starting off light here with Hades 2. This is the native Mac version. We're at 1080 high, running at 120 FPS. I could go up to 144 with my monitor, but I already had it locked at 120, and it looks great like this. So let's move on to something else. We've got the native Mac version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the built-in benchmark here, 1080 medium settings. We only averaged 49 FPS, but this is coming in ahead of the 780M by about 6 FPS with the same exact settings. No scaling going on here. The next one we have here is Metro Exodus at 1080p medium settings. And this one was really impressive, but I do know that they put a lot of time in kind of optimizing this game specifically for Mac. We're seeing an average of around 68 FPS with this game, and even up above, we're seeing an average of around 64, so it is playable here at 1080 medium. If you wanted to get more out of it, of course, you could drop that resolution down or just take it down to low. Now it's time to take a look at some non-native Mac gaming, and with this, I'm using the crossover application. Spider-Man Remastered 1080 medium, and I am using the built-in IGTI scaler, Comes with the game itself, you could go with FSR if you want to, but I have run into a few issues with other games and FSR on these Mac chips. So I went with that built-in scaler, and going in, I figured we'd see an average of around 40 FPS. By the end of this run, we had an average of 88 FPS with Spider-Man Remastered at 1080 on the M4. Next on the list, Elden Ring, and this was one that I did drop the resolution down a bit on. And to tell you the truth, from 1080 to 900, I only gained around 3 FPS. So I think even going down to 720 might help out just a tad. And unfortunately, it just can't break that 60 FPS mark. But I will admit that I'm no expert with crossover on these Macs. So there could be some tweaks that I'm missing here that might allow you to run this at full speed. And the final one I've got here is Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, low settings, FSR 3 seems to work pretty decently, and with these chips we can enable frame generation. So with it set up like this, we're seeing an average of around 73 FPS out of Cyberpunk on the M4 chip. CD Projekt Red recently stated that they will have a native Mac port in 2025, so that's going to be really interesting to see what we can do with that. It'll be specifically built for these ARM chips. But the fact that we can enable frame generation here with crossover on this M4 CPU is pretty impressive. I mean, it definitely helps out. At low 1080 with no FSR or frame gen, we were seeing an average of around 42. So it did significantly up that frame rate for us. Now I wanted to check out some PS3 emulation using RPCS3, and if you head over to the website, they do have a Mac version. We're not running this in crossover or anything like that. Last time I tested this was in the M2 Mac Mini. When it comes to this game here, Skate 3, it's very CPU intensive. Now that we've got those 10 cores here, it is trucking right along. We're at 720p using that Vulcan back in, and it's at a pretty steady 60 FPS. This really isn't that bad, but there are harder games to emulate here with the RPCS3 emulator like God of War 3. This one here, just couldn't get it up to 60. Did try a few hacks and I am using them right now from within the emulator. Still at that 720p resolution using the Vulcan back end, but as you can see up in the top left hand corner, not quite at a steady 60. You could lock this down at 30 and have a really good time with it on the M4, but I was kind of hoping to go in this and just see a tremendous jump in performance. Now I will admit from the M2 up to the M4, we are seeing much better performance, especially with this game here but it's not a dramatic jump, at least with this base model M4 CPU. Overall, I really do think that even the base model of the Mac Mini with that M4 chip is a major upgrade over the older Mac Minis. Is it a game changer for the mini PC scene? Personally, I don't think so when it comes to Windows and Linux mini PCs, but in the Mac ecosystem, I can definitely see this shaking some stuff up given that they do have that Mac Studio, which cost a grip and seeing what kind of performance this thing can put out like it is in its base form. I personally think if you're rocking a Mac mini with that M2 chip and you love that, if you upgraded to this, you're not going to regret it at all. 
But that's going to wrap it up for our first look video. I do want to spend a little more time with this. Kind of want to get used to using crossover. I know there's a lot of games that will run on this unit at full speed. I just kind of need to go through the whole library, see what's going on with this unit. So if there's anything else you want to see running on the M4 Mac Mini, or if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.